Chinese automobile manufacturer Zhili will invest 10 billion US dollars to turn Tanjung Malempera into the region's largest auto city, according to Bernama. Prime Minister Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim said the aspiration conveyed by the company in a 10 page letter to him last Monday night will create thousands of job opportunities for Malaysians. In his speech at the Selangor State Level Suntohan Agro Madani program, Anwar said the investment was not for getting commission or gift, but to ensure the growth of the economy. Meanwhile, Anwar, who is also finance minister, said the Saudi Arabian government and the kingdom's oil and gas giant Aramco will focus on its investment and operational expansion in Malaysia. The PM said that Aramco CEO Amin Nasser informed him that the group is comfortable with the government's policies and leadership and has decided to make Malaysia the hub for Saudi Arabia's oil and gas expansion in Southeast Asia. Anwar noted Malaysia's commendable economic performance as it notched a 5.6% growth in the first quarter, which compared favourably against China, Singapore and Indonesia. He also said the country had successfully attracted some 71 billion worth of approved investments in the first three months of this year, and that does not include the investments from Elon Musk, Aramco and Gili. Solavest Holdings is partnering two Singapore companies to advance energy storage solutions or ESS development in solar energy systems as it broadens its geographical expansion to Singapore and Brunei to capitalise on the growing demand for sustainable energy solutions given the strong prospects in both countries. In a statement, it said its wholly owned Solavest Energy has entered into a memorandum of understanding with Singapore's multifaceted industrial consultant Ida Holdings and Acumen Capital, a multi disciplinary real estate developer and manager for the ESS development for enhanced energy stability and reliability to promote energy sustainability in the commercial and industrial rooftop sector. The group has so far secured nine CNI rooftop solar photovoltaic installation projects across Singapore and Brunei with a combined capacity of nearly four MWP. It now has a project tender book of 60 MWP for rooftop solar PV projects in Singapore and Brunei. CEO Davis Chung Chung Siong says that SolarVest expansion into the Singapore and Brunei markets represents a crucial step in strengthening its ASEAN market presence. With that, he says that the total tender book for overseas projects currently stands at 720 MWP, indicating a strong job pipeline for the group. After hitting a record high of 1 ringgit 46 on Monday, shares of Ewin slumped by 5.48% or 8 cent to close at 1 ringgit 38 on Tuesday, following an independent advisor's recommendation that shareholders reject an unconditional mandatory takeover offer for the company. At 1 ringgit 38, Ewin share price is still at its second highest ever and has a market capitalization of 416.19 million ringgit. A day earlier, independent advisor UOB Kehian Securities Malaysia called the the unconditional mandatory takeover offer for Ewin not fair and not reasonable and advised shareholders to reject the deal given the steep discount of more than 40% of the stock's estimated value of 1 ringgit 4 cent. UOBKH said the not reasonable part comes from the fact that the offerer intends to maintain Ewin's listing status. Opening at 1 ringgit 48, the counter plunged as much as 13.7% or 20 cent to 1 ringgit 26 in intraday trade. To recap, on June 14, NationGate Holdings and MD and major shareholder Ui Ing Leong said he planned to acquire all the remaining 149.01 million shares of Ewin not already owned by him and persons acting in concert Datuk Sri Hong Yam Wa and Go Kian Teng for 89.41 million ringgit. Revenue Group's co-founder and ex-director Brian Ng Shi Chow, who is accused of forging invoices and purchase orders with the purpose of cheating the company, does not intend to send a letter of representation at this point in time. His counsel, Nor Isni Shazwani Ahmad from Amir Bon, said this to Sessions Court Judge Rosina Ayub's query during a brief case management on Tuesday. A letter of representation is normally sent by lawyers seeking a reduction or a withdrawal of the charges their client faces. Early this month, Ng pleaded not guilty 
guilty and claimed trial to 12 counts of forgery of invoices and purchase orders amounting to 13.829 billion ringgit with the purpose of defrauding the company. On Tuesday, Rosina also made an order to immediately replace Ung's bailer with another person. His current bailer is his brother, fellow Revenue Group co-founder and former director Dino Ung Shifang, who is also accused in another case where both siblings were charged in March with criminal misappropriation of property. The next case management has been set for September 6. Caretaker Kadam and Tribasar Datuk Sri Muhammad Sanusi Matnor claimed trial to two charges of sedition for statements he had made about the Yan Dipetuan Agong and Sultan of Selangor. Sanusi was charged with two counts of sedition under Section 41 of the Sedition Act 1948 for the statements he had made. Both charges accused him of uttering words that had a tendency to incite disloyalty against a ruler. For the first charge, Sanusi had allegedly belittled the Sultan of Selangor for having appointed Datuk Sri Amiruddin Shari as the state's MP and said that the Kedah Sultanate would not have appointed him. Sanusi also alleged that the Kedah ruler's lineage was the only one which was uninterrupted. For the second charge, Sanusi is alleged to have questioned the Yandi Petuang Agung's move to have the unity government under Prime Minister Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim. Sanusi faces a fine of not more than 5,000 or a jail term of not more than three years or both for each charge. Judges Noor Rajia Matzin and Osman Effendi Mohamed Shaleh also imposed a gag order on Sanusi to refrain from making any statements about the case. After posting a bail of 10,000 for the two charges, he told reporters that the sedition charges levelled against him were meant to dent Sanusi's chances in the upcoming Kedah state polls.